Okay, hi everyone. I'm Lindsay Carpenter with VSAC, um, and you are at in the health science breakout room as part of the Vermont Career Connect. What I'm going to do is have our panel members introduce themselves uh, by telling us your name and job title and where you work. Um, and then after the first panel member introduces ourselves, we will get into questions that you all may have. Um, so I will start with Charlotte. If you would uh, introduce yourself and tell us uh, your job title and where you work. Sure. So um, my name is Charlotte Smith. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a registered nurse. Um, I have been a registered nurse for over 25 years now. Um, and I currently work in the field of informatics, which is um, kind of using computers and technology to aid in the healthcare systems. Great. Thank you, Charlotte. David, if you would introduce yourself, please. Oh, is that better? My name is Dave Sakin. I'm the uh, lead technologist in blood bank at Littleton Regional Healthcare. I've been a lab tech since like 1971, and I'm still a lab tech. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, David. And Christine. Oh, maybe Christine Cooley is not here with us yet. Okay. Well, if she joins us, then I will have her introduce herself to the group. Um, so what I think we'll start with is those of you who are on the call, participants, if you have some initial questions that you would like to ask um, Charlotte or David, I will ask that you type them in the chat. Um, and if nothing, if nothing is coming to you at this moment, there are some other questions that were submitted that I can also ask. So I'll just give it a second to see if anyone wants to type a question in the chat for our presenters. I guess what, you know, not seeing any, what I might do is ask, um, and we could start with you, Charlotte, if you don't mind. Oh, we have one. Awesome. So, um, David, uh, we'll just start with you. The question is, how did you decide to go into your career? I, I, it was rather serendipitous for myself. I had a, a bachelor's degree in biology, and there's not very many jobs you can do with a bachelor's degree in biology. You, you should, usually need to have a graduate degree. So I had the opportunity. I worked as a phlebotomist in the hospital while I was in college, and when I got my degree, they asked me if I wanted to learn blood bank, and so I said, you bet. And so I've been a blood banker ever since um, and it's worked out really well for myself. So rather serendipitous. It was either that or sell birth control pills for one of the companies. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, David. Charlotte, I, I'll ask you the same question. Um, how, did you how did you decide to go into nursing? Well, I went into nursing as a second career. Um, like David, I was always interested in biology and thought and started out studying biology in college, but I didn't know anything about um, the healthcare field and I didn't know what I could do with a biology degree. So I switched and got a business degree, worked in business and technology for a few years and then got exposed to nursing when my elderly parents um, started to become ill and was fascinated by what I saw. I mean, I had been blessed that nobody in my family had been ill before that. So I hadn't really been exposed to healthcare. Um, and I was just, I was drawn to it at that point. So when I was in my early 30s, I went to nursing school and uh, never looked back. That's great. So I'm going to go ahead and ask another question that came uh, forward in the past couple of days. But um, those of you who are participating in this, if you have other questions, please type them in the chat for our presenters. Um, so we'll start with you, Charlotte. What education do you have? So um, because I started in the business field, I have a bachelor's degree in business, but then I went and got my bachelor's in nursing. Um, a lot of people who are a lot younger than me are now going on for their master's in nursing. 
Um, but I, w I felt that my bachelor's in nursing was good. You can go into nursing though with a two-year degree, an associate's degree in nursing and become a registered nurse. Although I still recommend the four-year bachelor's degree. Great, and Charlotte, so for both of those degrees, was that four years for both the bachelor's of business and nursing? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, David, what education do you have? I have a bachelor of science degree in biology I was fortunate enough to um, work at a State University of New York hospital, so I was able to attend some graduate courses at the university. I don't have a graduate degree, but I do have a, I went to med tech school, so I went, did a year internship as a, in a med tech school, and I, so I have a certificate as a medical technologist, and I also have a certificate as a specialist in blood bank. And you may have said this already, which I apologize. What, where are your, where are your, where's your certificate and your degree from? What institution? My degree is from Siena College, which is just outside of Albany, New York. And my certificate in medical technology I obtained at St. Peter's Hospital School of Medical Technology, where I also where I worked right after I got out of school. And then my certificate as a blood bank specialist, I didn't go to blood bank school. I just challenged the exam after so many years of experience, I could have challenged that exam. And that's usually considered PhD by industry and master's level by, by hospitals. Thank you. Charlotte, I should have asked you, uh, would you mind telling us where your degrees are from? Sure, so um, my business degree is from Montclair State University in New Jersey, and my nursing degree is from Mount St. Mary College in New York State. Great, thank you. I just think it's really important to hear where people decide to study because there are over 3,000 post-secondary institutions in the nation. So there's lots of choices. Um, okay, Charlotte, what was your first job out of college? Um, my first job out of college was, a, <laughs> nobody's gonna know what this is, a key punch operator. Um, my parents owned a computer, <laughs> <laughs> a computer firm. And in those days, the data was entered um, using like a cardboard card and it was read when um, there were holes punched in it uh, by data entry. And that's what I did. I did data entry for my parents. And I actually did that before I graduated college. Thank you. David, what was your first job out of college? I was a phlebotomist at St. Peter's Hospital for a while. And then they asked me if I wanted to learn blood bank. So I did. Well, I always think that's important to hear too, because so many times we there's many people who graduate from college and don't go right into their career field. Um, Madison wants to know how many years were you in college? So David, if you'd answer that first. Four years full time for the bachelor's degree. And then I, I just took one or two graduate courses for like two or three years while I was at Stony Brook. And uh, so that's about it. A, a year for the medical technologist internship. So fair to say like five total. Okay, and uh, Charlotte? So my bachelor's in business was a traditional four-year degree. Um, my bachelor's in nursing because of course I had prerequisites already done and I participated in an accelerated program. I was able to complete a four-year degree in two and a half years. Wow, that's great. Um, Okay, not seeing any other questions in the chat yet. I'll ask another one. So Charlotte, we'll start with you if you don't mind. Um, what are some things high school students can do to get a head start? Volunteer at a hospital, volunteer to be on the ambulance corps. Um, and if, there's, if your high school offers any classes or any special programs in the medical field, that's a great way to do it. My daughter, when she was in high school and thinking about going into nursing, um, was able to participate in a program at her high school where they shadowed in different, um, different types of offices, labs, radiology, even veterinary. So anything that you can do to be exposed to what people in the medical field do, um, it, because it's wide ranging, uh, it, it's the best thing. That's really good advice. Um, and David? Yeah. What's that question again? So what are some things that you would suggest that a high school student do to get sort of a head start? Our local high school offers a, a, a two-year program in allied health sciences. 
And part of that program is we'll take students and in their different areas of the hospital as mentors. And uh, I also go up there and also talk about laboratory science and teach phlebotomy to the students. I know some of the, stu the students get out of high school and they can actually sit for the LNA test. So it's, it's a really a good thing. There was uh, another question in the chat, so I'll, I'll start with you, David, if you don't mind. What's your favorite part of your job? Hmm. I get to use my brain a lot, which I, is, is, you know, a lot of times in medical technology, the instrumentation is like awesome. And it, but for me, the instrumentation is daunting. It's like, it's just not my forte. I can press one on the instruments, but in blood bank, I, it's mostly manual and probably 98% of the time a high school student could do my job. It's the 2% of the time when there's blood bank problems that you have to understand what's going on in blood bank, understand the different blood group systems. So it's, you really get to exercise your brain. Sometimes you have to exercise it more than you're able to. Able to. <laughs> Charlotte, what's the what's your favorite part of your job? So as a bedside nurse, I worked in critical care and the favorite part of my job then was just caring for people. I felt like I was able to give them a gift when I was able to take care of them when they were at their um, lowest point and help them feel better about themselves, not only help them feel better um, physically, but help them emotionally. My job now, because I'm in informatics and I'm not taking care of patients anymore, um, I help mentor people coming into my field who are not necessarily with a medical background to become trainers and start new careers. So that's very rewarding. Absolutely, thank you so much. It looks like our other presenter has joined us. Hi, Chrissy. Sorry, you're muted. I am so sorry. I am in um, Washington and I messed up the time difference. I'm sorry. No worries. Um, <laughs> we are just answering some questions. So if you wouldn't mind actually introducing yourself and letting us know what you do for work and maybe also, um, I'm not sure that our students on, on this call in Vermont know the time difference. Okay. Well, hi everyone. It is 819. <laughs> My name is Chrissy Cooley. Um, I work at the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department. I'm the water program manager. So I look at water quality for all of our lakes. And then since we're on the ocean, the shoreline as well, um, we look for where water quality intersects with human health. So out here, that means when people eat shellfish, is the shellfish safe? Is there fecal bacteria in it? So we test the water for that. Um, and we also look at toxic algae, which is getting worse and worse every year. So that's kind of a bummer, but um, I'm so sorry that I'm, I'm late and so wonderful to meet the other presenters. Your videos were so cool. Well, no worries at all. Life happens, right? Um, Chrissy, since you're joining us, I'm gonna just ask you a couple questions that the other presenters have um, answered. Uh, if you would share with us what education you have and how many years it took to get your degree or degrees. Sure. So my undergraduate degree is in environmental science, and that took me five years. And I think that's okay that you don't get a four-year degree in four years. I think that's fine. And um, then I have my master's in business administration because I wanted to go on to be a program manager. And I did that while I was working full time. So that took me four years in the evening. Awesome, good for you. Um, so I, I'm i gonna get back to the some of the questions in the chat. Um, here's a, a great question. It says um, from Elena, do you often see people with physical disabilities in your field? So I'll open that up to all the presenters. Um, I don't know. If Chrissy, do you want to start since you're on or? Um, I don't often see people in public health. We're looking at a, a macro lens. I don't work with a lot of people one-on-one -on -one individually. Um, we are instead looking at um, public risk to an entire population of people. Thank you, David. There's people with physical disabilities that work around, but people that have like uh, cognitive disabilities, I don't think they could cut it in the field. Charlotte? 
So I, I'm not sure if um, the question is, do I see patients that have physical disabilities or are there people with physical disabilities um, as nurses? Um, the answer is yes to both. Um, as a nurse, you need to be prepared to take care of whatever a patient presents with, whether they're an amputee, whether they have permanent lung damage, um, whatever that is. And as far as being a nurse, um, there are so many places that you can go and be a nurse that you don't have to have the physical strength that somebody who might want to be at the bedside would need. Thank you. Okay, any questions that are coming up for students on the call? Go ahead and type in the chat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and answer one of the questions that came through. How, I think this is a really important question. How do you decide between two different careers in the same field? I'm gonna say any, any, uh, I'll, I'll jump in there. So you can be a technical person or you could be an administration person. There's people that don't want to deal with the bureaucracy and have to deal with inspect, the inspectors or deal with upper level administration. The people just want to do bench work. And there's people that thrive on this whole administration, administrative portion. So it's like, I think the field is open for people that want to do lots of different things. He's just not locked into working in the hospital lab. And they could do sales, you could do administ you could be administration, you could do research, you could work in the doctor's office. So. I think from my perspective, you have to ask yourself, um, do you like working with people? Do you like working with technology? Um, do you, you know, if, if you like working with people, then go into somewhere that is going to give you that opportunity, as David said, whereas if you want to work more in technology, then there's ways to do that in the medical field, no matter where you are. Um, but even within nursing, you know, maybe somebody has a passion for um, behavioral health, people who have mental illness you can become a behavioral health nurse and work in that field to really um, to follow your passion. So you really have to think about within the medical field, kind of what what's gonna satisfy you. I'll take a bit of a different approach. Um, for me, I've worked in several different jobs and uh, sometimes I've moved to a new career path when just an opportunity arose or there were people or a group that I really wanted to work with. So it wasn't necessarily entirely about the job, um, but about uh, moving to a place that would give me more experiences for maybe a future job or um, just be a really great working environment. Thank you. And, and if those of you who are on the earlier segment with Kathy, she said the average person has 12 different jobs within a career sometimes, a career cluster. So sometimes it takes a little bit to find your the right fit. Uh, we had a couple uh, good questions come up in the chat. One was, what were you passionate about before you realized this was the field you wanted to join? And I'll just open it up to whichever presenter wants to answer first. I could go first on that one. I can honestly say, I enjoyed working in business. I enjoyed working with technology, but I was not passionate about them the way I was when I became a nurse. When I became a nurse, I knew I was quote unquote home. And so Charlotte, just to bring that bring that out a little bit more. So it was like the caring for others and knowing yeah. that you were really helping. Yes. Yeah, that sort of human connection. Go ahead, Chris. What was uh -huh. that, David? I just told Chrissy to go ahead. Thanks, David. Um, I was passionate about environmental issues and I was, I cared a lot about water quality and the, the um, hydrological cycle, especially in Washington as we're near a lot of heavy polluters in our port city. Um, and then uh, you wouldn't think of public health being the 
I didn't think of public health as being a place to address environmental issues, but it absolutely is when you're looking at water quality for the sake of health. So, um, and I'm kind of skipping ahead and then I'll pass the next one. I don't deal with blood and guts at all and I'm still helping people. So there's me if you're squeamish. <laughs> I was fortunate my, uh, my grandfather was a physician. And so from a young age, I had access to his microscope. And so I was always, always, always like growing stuff to look at under the microscope. Uh, you know, throw some lettuce in a, in a jar of water and I read a couple of days and you'd be surprised with stuff that you could see swimming around in there. So I, always, I was always into the microscopy. I was always into the science part. Um, my mom was kind of like gearing me to go into medicine and I thought about being a physician. But when push came to shove, I decided that there's other things in life that I wanted to do more than be a physician, even though it really was an attractive I did get into medical school, but I decided I, I didn't really want to go that route. So I, I, I kind of worked, worked out, life brought me brought it down a notch and gave me still access to the medical field and where I still could use my science, but not quite as much direct patient care. There's another question in the chat. I don't know that I will pronounce it correctly, but um, Maddie wants to know, do you hear get a lot about lipoprotein? I do. <laughs> David does. But, you know, what about lipoproteins? It's like, you know, what about them? <laughs> Are I you, don't you know. mean like lipids, like, like your cholesterol and that kind of thing? Um, it's, it's wide open. I'm really yeah. not a chemist. You do like the testing, and I know what they are, but I don't deal with them directly. Oh, like the heart issue, she's saying. Uh, in the lab, we just generate numbers. We don't interpret the data. It's up to the physician to do that. Uh, we can see, we can, you know, we see the data, and we, we do know how to interpret it to, to a great extent, but the, phys the physician actually knows the patient and what's going on with the patient, and they interpret the results based on their knowledge of the patient. So I, you know, while I deal with lipoproteins, I don't really, I only report out the data. Right, you do the science behind it really. Right. Yeah, it's like when you have testing done, you know, the lab technicians can't tell you what they are, the physician has to deliver that. Yeah, we, we, you know, is, you know when people, want, they want to know what the doctor's ordering it for, and we always, our pet answer is you have to ask the doctor. Right. So we, we, just, we just report out the data. A lot of times the doctor will call us and ask us what the data means, and we'll say, <laughs> I can't answer that. I, you know, it's like I mean, I, I could give you like sixteen different answers. Uh, so, right, um. right. Um, another great question: Do you have to go to med school to work in the health science fields? No. No, and I mean, Christy is a testament to that, right? You didn't go to med school. No, I didn't, I didn't even go to public health school. <laughs> And I, I'm probably the only one in the public health of the people I work with. Yeah. Sorry, Charlotte, did you want to say something about that? No, that's okay. I mean, if you go to medical school, you become a doctor. Right. There's lots of other training for all the different people that work in the hospital or in the health field. Yes. Okay, I'll keep going through my list, but I'm loving the questions coming in the chat, so keep those coming. Um, ooh, okay, this is a good one. What is training or education for a nurse other than tech person versus physician's assistant? So I think this is sort of, Charlotte, you might be able to speak to Yeah, that. so a nurse is either a two or four year degree. If you go on and get your master's in nursing, you can become a nurse practitioner, which is the equivalent of a physician's assistant. Physician's Assistant School is a two-year program after a bachelor's degree. So they have this, they have similar licensure, they have similar education to become a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant. Um, both require master's level education and that education allows them to independently diagnose um, disease and prescribe medication. And they work with a physician. Thank you. 
nursing is one of those that has so many different fields, so many different paths. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if David or Chrissy, if you wanted to add anything to that, if you do go ahead. I had been a, I had applied to a physician's assistant program decades ago, early 70s. At that point in time, they were only interested in, they were looking for corpsmen who had come back from Vietnam and, and nurses with serious experience. They weren't looking for lab guys. But then five or six years later, I, I know people that just go to school and go, go to PA school right out, of, right out of getting a bachelor's degree with really no experience. Whereas in the early years of PA programs, they were looking for people that had like experience with patient care, direct patient care. So it's changed. It's, it's, it's changed it started. Chrissy, I'll ask you a question. Um, you had said that you were always interested in environmental science. Um, did you ever think there was a, did you know early on that there was a connection between environmental science and public health, like what you're doing now? I mean, I think obviously we all know that there's a connection between air quality and your lungs and um, the things you take into your body and how that affects you. Um, but I didn't know there was a career path for me. Um, I started off my career in university sustainability. I worked there for 10 years um, trying to go zero waste and zero carbon in buildings. And that led me into a water realm around habitat restoration. And that led me to a conservation district. And that led me to public health. And that's a super abridged version, but I'm just putting it out there to share um, what Lindsay said about jumping around in careers. You just, you're finding the right fit. Like I was always um, very clear in what I wanted to do and that I wanted to make a difference, but I didn't know the methodology to get there. And I'm, I'm really happy now, um, but I, this is my, fourth pretty official job, I guess you'd say. Um, and I, I think that's okay. Absolutely. I mean, how do you know, unless you, you know, if, if you're always sort of feeling like there's something else for you to be doing, it's great mm -hmm. to keep your options open. Um, and I think it's really important to have a variety of those of you in the health field on this, in this panel. Oh. Can I just add, that's not to say I wasn't happy in my other jobs either. It's sure, just, yeah. It's just an evolution. It's not like you have to wait 12 years to find something you love. Right, right, yeah. And I didn't mean to project that. You there. didn't. I just don't want to get that out there. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, I might switch it up a little bit to, um, to ask some questions that are sort of more around just like any sort of career. Um, and sort of like all those benefits that that we all have from from like getting that post secondary education and then finding a career um, that has flexibility and allows us to do the things that we feel passionate about. Um, so I'll just start with this one. Does your job allow for flexibility in your work schedule and your job duties? I'll go. Okay. Yeah. My my job does. I actually retired a couple of years ago, but there's nobody to work, so I. Uh, Started working again as a per diem and then part time. Now I'm working full time, but you know, I told, I reminded them that I did retire, and it's like you know, sometimes I need to have some time off just because I need to have some time off to do things that I would do if I was retired. And they're very accommodating, and they've been accommodating since I came back in 1992. Um, I was a salaried employee for a long time, and uh, they they still would let me go out and do things. I rest, I've got high school basketball. I rescue uh, baseball and softball and the hospital is really accommodating because they like to see their employees involved in community activities also. So for me, it's been a great fit. So from my perspective, um, my job varies very much month to month because we're working on implementing and going live with, with computer systems in hospitals. Um, we have, I have a system that I've been working with. It's in Cape Cod right now. I'm in North Carolina. And they go live Sunday morning. So we're in kind of a crunch time. I have less flexibility. Once we get past this, I'll have a tremendous amount of flexibility until we kick off the next one. So it really just varies. 
I would say my job has a lot of flexibility, but with that comes the need to really be organized and keep yourself on task. Um, it would, I think I could go a, a couple months falling behind without folks noticing. And I don't say that to say I do, but it just really, you gotta be on yourself. And then I think, I don't know how you feel Charlotte and David, but we're in the middle of watching the workforce change right now. The way we're working from home, or at least I am working from home. David looks like you're at work right now, <laughs> but I'm working from home. Work is changing. And I don't know what it's going to look like at the end of COVID for the career field that you all are entering, if it will be how it'll change. So it's, it's just an interesting time. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I, that's a good point. You know, um, obviously, healthcare, you're going to you're going to the job because you're, you're not going to have the sick people come to your house. They're going to come to your, to your workplace. But, you know, other positions. Now, my daughter's a, a, a teacher, and it's like some of the time she's at school, and sometimes they're doing virtual. And so what did they say on the news today? There may never be a snow day again because <laughs> <laughs> now we can do it, we can do it at home. <laughs> Oh yeah, you all are in Vermont, <laughs> right? <laughs> There's a great question in the chat. Um, is it hard to watch people not listen to science? It, or it is. <laughs> it's very frustrating, but I know that there's things that I could do in my life that could improve my health. And um, I know the science behind them and I still don't always follow the science. So one part of me kind of understands, but yes, it, it is very frustrating to see people who just deny the science of climate change or uh, COVID or whatever you want to talk about. Yes, it's extremely <laughs> frustrating. Charlie, I like that answer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that for myself, but this is something I struggle with constantly. I, I can say this because you all are on the other side of the country. Our board, our leadership of the health department, we have a few members that are elected officials that were pushing hydrochloroquine in the middle of COVID and other rumors that didn't follow science. And it is incredibly frustrating. It's frustrating with the people I serve who jump in the lake, even though I tell them that there's toxic algae in it, but it's way more frustrating when your leadership isn't following science. And I don't have a good answer for that other than find a cohort of policy-minded people to try and use as a support group. That's my my only advice. I'm wading through that right now. So I would take advice. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, another question from the chat. How do you all feel about the essential oil community? I'm ambivalent. The essential oil community is that? So I'm I'm wondering, and Maddie, maybe just type in the chat. Are you referring to like using essential oils for uh, homeopathic reasons, like the effects on the environment? Maybe just um, flesh that out a little bit in the chat if you can, Maddie. Or if Charlotte or Chrissy have answers. I don't intersect with them in my work, so. Um, I learned to be very careful about essential oils. Um, I do believe in them and um, tried using them a little bit when I was at the bedside. And, you know, lemon is supposed to wake you up. Well, when you work nights and you use lemon to wake yourself up, but the patients smell it, it wakes them up too, and you really want them to sleep. So, <laughs> and using lavender to help keep them calm, it's great, but it's gonna make you sleepy. So, <laughs> I think that's a great- So I just have, you have to be really careful. Yeah, it's a great distinction, Charlotte, right? Like, I mean, I'm not a scientist, but using essential oils as it's appropriate, like I sometimes have them to stay focused, mm -hmm. but it's been suggested to me at times to use them to help treat my son's type one diabetes. Those two cannot be, connected at all. Yeah. Um, I think that's knowing the background. Um, 
So yeah, Maddie, extend on that. The people who think oil will make you feel better when you're really sick and don't believe they need health care. Yeah, no, it doesn't replace health care. Okay. I will go ahead and ask another question. Um, let's see, there's, oh, well, here's just a basic one. Charlotte, are you glad that you chose this profession, that you went from business to nursing? Absolutely, because at this point in my life, I've been able to combine my IT background, my business background, and my nursing background to do what it is I do today. And I wouldn't be where I am without all of those steps in the past. I'd say I'm, I'm glad that, that Blood Bank chose me more than I chose it. It's just kind of like fell into my lap and I just went with the flow. It worked, it's worked out great for me. Um, yeah, I th sorry, I think I've answered the questions. So I don't want to take up too much time. Yeah, I'm very happy here. <laughs> How about, um, what are some benefits beyond compensation that your organization or your profession gives you? Are you asking like what, what are my benefits are at work? Is that what yeah, I mean, I you? think or... it's trying to, yeah, sure. Aside from, you know, I get a great deal of self-satisfaction working on someone that has like a complex blood bank problem because I can pretty much solve almost all of them. Some I can't and have to send them away to the Red Cross. But for me, I, it really makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. And jobs have different different amounts of benefits. I mean, I have like healthcare, dental, vision, retirement, the usual everything, a couple of different, even have like AFLAC. So it's like for something, so it's kind of interesting. But uh, now I worked at, I took a temp job a couple of years ago. I took a leave of absence and went out to Santa Barbara for three, for six months and ran like three blood banks. And I didn't have any benefits at all except an, an outrageous paycheck. So it turned out about to be revenue neutral by the time I bought health insurance and everything else that I needed that, you know, came with my, with my other position. It worked out about the same, but it was worth it for the experience for myself. So good benefits. So I have to say that I am a consultant and up until COVID, I travel for work. Um, as a matter of fact, that's how I got connected with this program because I worked at University of Vermont Medical Center last year as a consultant and led a team there. Um, so I am able to keep my own miles that I earn when I fly every week, even though somebody else is paying for them. I get to keep my own hotel points that somebody else is paying for. And my husband and I enjoyed a two week trip to Hawaii this year that basically was paid for with all those points. So, um, you know, I consider myself pretty lucky. Um, I would definitely echo the, the satisfaction for my work. I love seeing a difference. I love applying because we aren't just monitoring water quality, we're doing things to improve it. And I love watching year over year, seeing water quality improve where it does. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it gets worse, but I love seeing the results. Um, and then as I got older, I have a little girl now and going back to that flexibility and um, being in a workplace that will appreciate work-life balance matters a lot to me. That's part of the reason why I made my last switch to this field. Um, so I'd have have more flexibility. Not that my past job was um, unreasonable in any way, but uh, I wouldn't have been able to ever work from home or do anything like that. So uh, those types of benefits are things that I would look for if I were to apply for a job right now. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to answer that question that Madison just posted. Thank Please, you. For day or night shift. Yeah. I've worked all of them, days, evenings, and nights. When I first got started working in the blood bank, I worked evenings. I worked like three three evenings and then a double shift on Saturday or a double shift on Sunday, evenings and overnight. Um, and then I went from there and I worked nights for seven years at a big university hospital. And I, now I, I've worked days ever since. And they all have their benefits. 
Uh, days, if you want to live a normal life, days is great. Evenings, if you sleep late, your day is, your day is shot. There's nothing you can do except go to work. Nights is great, except that the rest of the world lives on a different clock. And, you know, it's like your, your life is different <laughs> when you work nights. It's the only thing I can tell you. Um, I liked all of them. Evenings was probably my favorite just because I, I, I just like that. I like, I, I'm an early morning person. I could get up early, do stuff, go to work, stay up late. I could sleep late if I wanted to, if I wanted to lose that day. And otherwise, for me, they were, they were all, just, I like them all. Evenings I like best. I've worked nights before and I liked it at the time and I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked nights um, for a couple of years and found out very quickly that I am not a night person. Um, but there are people who enjoy it. My niece is a nurse up in New Jersey, and she has worked nights for 10 years and wouldn't consider going to a day shift. She doesn't want to be around when all the bosses are there. So many th things to consider for both. Yeah. Any other questions? for our panelists. You can enter them into the chat. Is there any, so panelists, and I don't mean to put you on the spot if you don't have an answer right away, that's fine. Is there any advice you'd give a young person considering this field, this profession, or even just entering that time of planning for life after high school? I, I don't, I think it goes for any profession. If you're really lucky, you're going to get to do something that you like to do. It's not, it's not even work, man. It's just like, I mean, I enjoy coming to work. I mean, there's days I don't want to come, but it's, I enjoy the stuff that I do. And, it's, and, and if you're really lucky, you'll find something that you like to do, and then you can get a job doing, working with stuff like that. Um, I can't say enough. I, I would hate to have to be like a, a salesperson or, or, any, anything I can't imagine doing anything else except maybe being a rock star. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> I, find stuff that makes you feel good, and if you can get a job in it, go for it. That's my big advice because you'll be happy. Also, and I think I would say that, um, and and we've all kind of said it in different ways whatever you decide to pursue at 18, at 20, at 22, doesn't have to be what you want to do for your entire life. Um, you know, Lindsay, you referred to job clusters within a career. I've had multiple careers. So, you know, pick what you like now and let it evolve. And if you change what you want to do, don't be afraid to change because you can you can change your mind. You're not stuck. Absolutely, what great that's great advice because you progress in life and, um, and you're going to find things that it's like I told my daughter when she went to college. I said, you, you signed up to do this this, this course of study. I said you're going to go there. You're going to be exposed to all kinds of different things. It's okay to change your mind, and she did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I have advice for getting your first job. I think every job, not just for me, every job that I've gotten has been through some sort of relationship I formed. And a lot of times it was through volunteer work, but um, especially in college, you know, I didn't have time to volunteer. I was working and going to school, but I was able to incorporate some volunteer work into my coursework that if I had to do a class project for something, I would try and reach out to an organization that I was interested in and dedicate my project to them. So that way it was still my coursework, but I was still volunteering. And that helped me um, gain relationships that actually led to my first job. So. Such great advice. I think I'm just gonna take like the last five minutes and show it to all my students all the time. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm going to make a comment. I hope, it, hope it's not inappropriate, but 
people we see coming into the workforce nowadays don't seem to have the work ethic that we think is important, at least in, in the hospital field. Um, I mean, when I, when I started working, even, even if, in, in my work ethic is the professional employee who stay until the job is done. And we have people that's like, it's like nine to five, it's at five, it's at five o'clock, I'm punching out and I'm leaving. And it's like, you really, you really can't say much about it, but it just seems like the work ethic of people coming into the field nowadays is not what those of us who have been in the field for a while really like to see. And I've seen, I mean, from when I was in California and any place I've been, I, I inspect the blood banks all over the East Coast and everybody says the same thing. It's like the, the people coming into the fields nowadays just don't have the work ethic that, that people expect. So if you find something that you really like to do, you're gonna have the right work ethic for it. Otherwise you're just gonna be a nine to fiver and you won't look forward to going to your job. Just my perspective as someone who interviews people for, for work and things like that. But that's what we're looking for. People that aren't afraid to work and are, are gonna give us a professional employee. It's, and it's, a, it's actually a great point. We've talked a lot in this um, session about sort of those hard skills that you all have, like the degrees and the type of work you do. So this brings up a great question, which are, what are some characteristics um, and some of those like transferable skills that students should be honing in on and working on in middle school, high school, so that they can be successful in college and a career. Um, what would be some of your advice, panelists? I think from my perspective, I would think about um, organizational skills, um, flexibility, uh, as David said, work ethic, and I think no matter what area you're going to go into, um, whether you're going to stay in some sort of health science or whether you're going to go into something else, knowing basic Microsoft Office, um, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, things like that are going to be crucial because you're going to need them in college. And most jobs these days will involve those on some level. I don't have anything more to add. That was great. Um, I wonder, Lindsay, for this course, if you've done anything, uh, like any assessments to see what your strengths are. I'm personally a really big fan of the Gallup Strengths Finder, but I think that there's a ton of these tools out there that um, tell you what your strengths are and then also tell you what maybe the shadow side of that strength is. So I'll just Put my heart on the line. My number one strength is that I'm a ch an achiever. I get a lot of things done. I have a great work ethic. I work very hard. But the um, shadow side of that is sometimes I'm too task oriented and I can leave people behind. And taking this strengths finder assessment and really diving into my strengths helped me hear that feedback better. That people weren't saying, oh, you stink at stakeholder engagement they were saying you're really good at this and you're just taking it too far maybe that was me being sensitive but I think um, knowing your strengths and really knowing yourself and being able to be really self-aware there's again lots of tools um, to help with that but that's something that's helped me in the past thank you yeah that's um, a great I haven't used that tool, so I, I wrote it in the chat for others, but um, but I th I don't know about the students on in this room if they've done any like of those, you know, learning style inventories or strengths finder, but it is always worth doing and you kind of get familiar with what those transferable skills are that you need to help be successful in careers um, and life in general, honestly, you know, being organized, um, setting goals for yourself and reaching them. Um, and maybe, you know, going back to what you were saying, David, putting in some of that extra work to get it done, um, because it's, it's that work ethic is important. Okay, I'm gonna say any last questions, put them in the chat. We're just about out of time. Um, while I give students a chance to type those in, if there's any last, well, first, I want to thank each of you for joining us and sharing um, your experience and your work fields and um, getting up and joining us from the West Coast. Chrissy, thank you so much. Oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any last um, comments you all want to make to this group? 
And if not, that's okay too. I don't have any more words of wisdom, no. There was a lot of words of wisdom on this call, so much appreciated. This will be um, posted on the Vermont Career Connect website on VSAC's website in a couple days. For those of you who'd like to watch it again or share it with others, please feel free to do so. I just have a comment for Charlotte. I just remember in college, we had a teacher that taught Fortran. And we used to slip a couple of extra cards in his file every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would uh, not go over well. <laughs> <laughs> that took a lot to figure out which ones didn't belong in. <laughs> yep, yep. Because it would be like three or four inches thick, that pile of cards. That's right. All right, well, I'm not seeing any other questions, so I'm going to say thank you again to our panelists and thank you to those students that joined us today. Um, hope you have a great rest of your day and you can just uh, click the leave room when you're ready to go. Thank you so much. And Lindsay, Cassandra said to say hi. Oh, awesome. Cool. Have a great day. Hi, hi to her. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now. <laughs>